Talk to you guys about an important subject somebody requested a while back here. Um, hood adjustment. So on the early cars, these are pretty complicated. It, it seems pretty easy, but uh, it can be pretty frustrating and pretty complicated if you don't really know what to do. So real quick, I'm going to show you how that this thing, first of all, comes apart and how the cable works so you can uh, figure this out a little bit easier. Okay, so this little panel right here fits underneath on the inside of these two guys right here. It goes on the inside, and then you see how this is slotted. This thing slides up here. That's how you access. So you open up, loosen up all three bolts, and uh, bolts and nuts, and you have to usually put your screwdriver through the hole there's a hole in the back and push on it and that pops this little fella out right here so that is enabled you to get to the cable so if you're wondering how to get your cable off that and it's right here so let's look here Dang it. hold on a second let's get it right here uh, so it looks like Trying to get a decent amount of light in here. There's a little, the cable goes into this little screw. You can see right here. And that uh, is your set screw. So what you want to do is make sure that your cable, first of all, is all the way in. So I'm going to go over the cable and then the hood adjustment as well. Um, your cable has to be, make sure that your cable, your hood release knob is pushed all the way in on the inside of the car uh past so that the aluminum portion of the shaft is inside the tube because if it gets hung up on the outside of the tube like mine did a little bit ago you'll think it's already all the way in but then as soon as it as soon as you set the screw and you go to pull on it it misadjusts so the way this is designed so that if your cable breaks if your cable happens to break this little guy right here inside you see the closure will actually dart over all the way so that you can just lift your hood open without any latch. So if, if it so if it so happens that your cable does break, they have it so that the hood can be opened without having to pry it open or something. Um, so, and then what happens is it goes to where you can see this little, first of all, it's like a, just a straight hole. And then when you adjust it to where it's ready to be closed and start to adjusting your hood, it um, it gets in this position as you as you pull and adjust your cable. You'll kind of see what I'm talking about when you do it. Um, but so kind of trust me that 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 works. Um, and then so then now when I pull on my cable, this little half moon shape thing will actually pull over to the side, and so you can release the hood. Um, one of the reasons most of the people their hood gets stuck and it doesn't shut is there's a lack of spring tension right here. So it should, as soon as you pull on your hood release, it should just, your hood should just pop up just a little bit. And if your spring tension is not strong enough, then this little apparatus here won't uh, have enough tension on there so it'll pop the hood up. So usually you have to just turn this guy in a few turns to get that tension there. But that will also mess with your hood adjustment. So it could make it too too hard to shut. So it is a happy medium in there. You play around with it a little bit. Make sure you have a friend around because you probably are going to uh, have your hood not open by pulling the handle um, once or twice before you get it in the right place as far as the spring tension goes. So usually what I do is I over spring tension it a bit first and then I start backing it out until I, I just kind of know the feel of it for that. Now, there's only two adjustments, or really three, I guess, on your hood, and the rest of it is absolutely 100% tweaking your hood. So a lot of the stuff you want to do before you do your body work, um, I did some of it, but I didn't really get mine really tight. Um, I was planning on hoping that I wasn't going to crack anything doing it, and if you do, you just have to repaint those areas. 
So the only adjustments really there are are these, this one here, and there's these two bolts here to give you the uh, gap adjustment for the rear of the hood. For the sides, let me see if I can shut uh, or set this hood down, and then I'll show you that. For this gap right here, which it, it doesn't really have a gap this much, I just have it setting in position. Um, it is 100% tweaking different things. So if this gap's too large, it means you could have to push your apron in a little bit. Um, if it's too narrow, it means that you need to re-arc your hood. You know, make it arc out further. Sometimes you have to arc the hood um, back and forth. And you do that by using wood blocks and actually just bending the hood a little bit. Um, a really common one is you have to look here into the, the middle. Um, a lot of times they're either too flat or up a little bit too high in the middle of the hood. And uh, that can cause problems with all of the gaps. So um, if you're trying to get your hood to be perfect, um, you're probably not going to be having much luck. Let me show you this old car over here. This 65 is actually about as close to perfect as I've seen a hood shut. Now, when this is all the way down, there's no latch on it, so it's easier to tell when there's no latch and no rubber. Take a look at that. Almost no gap, can't get my finger in there. Um, all the way around. And then this is dented in, this fender's dented in, so this is a little bit off of gap around here. So once this quarter is pushed back out, this should be fine. The back is like this. You notice that it's a little bit low right here, so you sh I, I should probably put a piece of block of wood underneath here and just push it down and kind of try and close it a little bit, and that kind of lifts that center up. It, uh, so that you, you do that a few times, and then all of a sudden you'll think, wow, I'm not doing anything, and then all of a sudden you'll have to push on it a little bit harder, and then that's when you're doing it the right way. And you look here, this gap all the way down, it's pretty even right near the fender bead. That's the way it should be. See the gap here between this side and this side is never always exactly the same. See it's a little bit different. That's normal. Okay, you're not going to get a perfect even gap on both sides and have it shut and have it go into the closure. They never did when they were new. So uh, because it's really it's a tripod type of a hood closure versus a regular car has you know two, one on either side. Also, your rubber has to be in exactly right. There's a, everything has to be perfect for your hood to shut just right to get a perfect hood closure. Um, what I was going to show you, another thing, I forget what it is. Let me think about it for a second. And there is a very small adjustment here. Behind these washers on the closure, on this portion here, the black part, there is a slotted bolt. And that can help you out a little bit with that right to left. But then when you move it right to left, you're going to be messing with the arc. So unless you move the, the back corner back. So there, you know, it's, it's finessing. It's very time consuming if you're trying to get it really, really good. Um, usually my goal is, is to try and get it to close and not have air coming into the car too badly. Which, if you have a lot of air coming into the car, it's because your your uh, hood is not touching the rubber. So, um, the other items, I'm not as worried about myself trying to get it exactly the same from this fender bead to the hood as it is from this fender bead to the hood. Again, you're going to do that by moving this thing over back and forth, but you will be messing with your arc as well. Because one side, if you look at just this hood, just the movement, um, you know, it's hard to see. Let me see if I can get it. Just this movement right here causes from that, causes this area even to pop out like a little, um, like there's stress point right here. So um, if you can get the idea, there's no... Perfect way to fix a hood. Oh, this is the other item I was thinking about. This important you you run into is you see this gap here, right here. These hoods flew open a lot, and right here, if this is 
a little bit off right here. That's okay. But if you look at it and you can get your finger in, if you can see that, let me turn on the light. Ah, oh, there we go. If you can get your finger in there, no good. You need to make sure that uh, that hood, that you, that you retweak your hinge area, this hinge carrier back into position so that it's fairly even across here. It doesn't need to be 100%, but the closer to 100%, um, then the better your hood's going to shut. So look at that very carefully on your hood and make sure that it wasn't going down the road and flipped up. And what that does is that causes this thing to have a huge gap. Very Another very common area about hood um, adjustment. So I think that pretty much covers all the areas. It's hard for me to really to do it um, without having one that I'm really adjusting on. Maybe with the GoPro on, I can do that at another time and show you guys exactly how to do it. But every car is so different. There are just so many different compounded situations. You know, re-arcing this can be difficult. You, you have to put wood blocks under here and gently, you know, tweak it back down to arc it out. If it's, this hood looks like it might be a little bit too far arced. So I might have to actually push it up and arc it back into position. And you're talking about a sixteenth to eighth of an inch. And it's hard to do that. You know, even just that little bit. But it can be done. If you want to have it really, really perfect, you can do it if you work on it long enough. Um, but it is very difficult to have a perfect shutting hood on a Volkswagen because, like I said, they don't they didn't fit perfect when they were new. All right, then, guys, um, and it's a tripod. You know, if it was four points, it's a lot easier to adjust than when it's three. It's, you know, there's basically you have a chair with three legs. If one leg is not working correctly, it's you can't sit on it. It doesn't work. So trying to, you know, you'll be off balance or you'll fall, be falling over. So that if you get that idea in these hoods that it's a three point, then you can get an idea that it just you're probably going to have some degree of uh, a problem with it.